test driving this car for about two hours straight. I want to tell you everything about this um, Elantra NPE and what this car has got to offer. Look at wow! I don't know what that means. Okay, he wants to go. So we have a pre-face lift, Elantra, and right in the front, as you can see. I will be mentioning this a lot throughout today's drive, that is for sure. I can already tell. The way it goes over the speed bump, it's just so much more smoother than before. I am currently in N mode. Right? So this is not a custom setup, but rather this is the legit, the end mode. It's much more smoother over the speed bump. I really like this crisp feeling of going over the speed bump on the luster end due to the shorter wheelbase. The longer wheelbase this Elantra end has compared to the Veloster end definitely has got to do a lot with uh, providing more comfortable drives. And, can't believe there is this auto hold feature that I never thought I would see on an N or Elantra N at least, right? We already saw this on Kona N, but not with the Elantra though. Just a lot of fans out here just trying to check out and feel this Elantra for themselves. Of course, I am no exception. Let me show you again, I am in N mode and there is the N performance brakes, the four pot with the slotted rotors too. That, that one looks just amazing. And performance blue N here. Kona N as well. Oh, that's an N line, okay. I really hope the video is delivering it, how smooth it goes over the speed bump because if you have been driving an N, if you are an N owner, and most likely you are, if not, you're really interested. This is day and night difference, actually. How much it's that smooth, how this goes over the speed bump, you see. Never thought I would actually um, welcome this many speed bumps. <laughs> and I am definitely giving you the POV drive today. This is gonna be so much fun. I'm actually participating in what's called N Beach. It's the second time that Hyundai has been doing this with their N brands. A bunch of Ns here, starting with the i20 and WRC spec, the N that started it all. The latest N in the family, Hyundai Ionic 5N and also Ionic 5 and drifts back. Goodwood Festival of a Speed a few weeks ago, currently up in the display, the very car that we saw at the Drift Fest. Don't miss that video out because I will definitely be covering that video. Where do I get started? Well, let's get started with this one first um, since it's super slow right now, the traffic. So you see, this is the key fob. The key fob that we actually started seeing with Hyundai Ionic 6 and Ionic 6 had the light blue covers around it, whereas you can see it's completely blacked out. It has the uh, a little bit of a gloss finish. Oh no, it's actually, it's completely matte black protective film. So if you take that off, it's going to be a completely matte black key. Let me actually just quickly pull over here. This is a test driver, so it, it's okay. So let me just peel this off. See the protective film? And once that is gone, you see it's completely matte black. I, I like this. What do you... <laughs> Elantra N gets the auto hold. Thanks to the EPB electronic parking brake, I actually have the auto hold on and the car is at a halt on its own. Fascinating and interesting feeling this from Elantra N. All right, so well enough of that. So car is currently on a hold on its own using the EPB. No more manual handbrake, the e-brakes here. I don't know. So how many times do you actually yank your e-brake, hand e-brake? I mean, I did. <laughs> When I was doing the Gymkhana with my Veloster and DCT, a lot of deviation from 
the key fob that we've been talking about. So don't be fooled, it's just the protective film that is um, displayed right here. And on the rear, <sighs> that end badge. So the end badge. So it looks like this front and back. Uh, no buttons on the sides except for the trunk. The handle missing on the trunk that I already know but still it's better than nothing. At least it's going to give you some little bump when you open up the trunk right? So we'll find that out too. Everybody all the end owners out there I know you guys will love this. This Hyundai key fob and also the end badge. Sorry for you those end owners out there already you're your keys are outdated already or should I say it's about time like this is the PE model product enhancement product enhancement after all there is still that performance blue color right here a little bit of the leather so I like that finish it would have been nice if they brought back that performance blue seatbelt color here like they did with the Veloster ends but Elantra and even on the PE didn't get this one yet hello so you are seeing this for your information, if you're looking for a detailed exterior and interior review, please check out my previous video. I've spent hours going over all the detail, picking up the nitty gritty things about this Elantra PE over there. So I might be going over a uh, same thing here, but you just have to, right? But here, I just quickly want to touch up on the what I immediately feel. This is the things that you will also feel when you hop inside this 2024 Hyundai Elantra NPE. You're going to notice this for sure. The blacked out Hyundai emblem, flat also, but it's blacked out. Hyundai has started doing this, starting with their Granger, AKA Azera for North American market and overseas. That is, there is this black ink edition and that originates from the traditional ink called Muk in Korea. Quickly show you and shed some light upon it because I really like Hyundai bringing the Korean heritage and I just gotta go because I see an Elantra MPE model right there in red. So I gotta get on driving with this car. Don't want to lose it. I just want to get some be good beauty shots of it. Maybe good time to hit on the NGS. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I have it right in front of me. I actually, well, didn't mean to, but I did spot another Elantra and PE currently being test driven here. Ultimate red metallic. Oh my God, that dark red looks really beautiful in person. Of course, it's my first time seeing car, this car in person. And of course, you don't even need me mentioning that how to that. Yes! <laughs> that blip noise and sound is actually just so beautiful. I'm curious if uh, I can actually do the HDA. Yes, you can! You can use the smart cruise control even on the end mode. If I recall, Genesis didn't allow this on their Sport Plus mode but it's not. You can actually have the HDA on in the end mode. And I'm curious how it's going to pick up the speed so that there's like a huge gap with the cars in the front with me and all. I'm sorry I'm jumping all over the place, but you gotta understand, I just have no choice but to. The latest HDA from Hyundai Motor Group family the moment you tap on this um, button, the smart cruise control, it's actually going to go into the HDA smart cruise control right away with this Elantra. The LSD kicking in, oh my God, I've been missing you for so long. <laughs> the grip it's giving me, it's just so massive. This is just insane. You know, I actually ended up buying my Veloster N after two test drives. And um, you see, so it is a... Uh... So we'll, let's see.
Okay, so now that I actually have a good feel of it, the exhaust sound, exhaust does sound different. So all of this, I am actually currently in N mode. So I did not manually set any of the different drive modes. It's completely in N modes. And yes, um, the pop and bang, the, the popcorn sound, the bubbles, it's different. I can actually feel and tell that. I have my magic recipe here that makes it the loudest sound of it all, which I'll show you in the custom setup. This is the secret recipe that I told you about. So look at that color, it's so beautiful. So listen to the noise coming into the cabin. And also I have windows rolled down as you can see, it sounds, it sounds different. I'm not really going to say that it's more quiet, but I I think I want to say that this is more refined and uh, moderate and tuned. Again, this uh, auto hold is just so beautiful, it's super comfortable. I want to mention the black bedge right here with the Elantra. The black and red combination, it can never be wrong. I don't see any uh, fog light right here, so that is not going to light up. It is a dummy for domestic market here in Korea. I know some countries do actually have that as fog lamps. It's not available here in Korean market. That rear reflector is also really, really long and tall. It's positioned right underneath the trunk lid, so from that middle point up, Honestly, nothing much has been changed except for the blackout emblem, but however, the middle point down where the black portions are, longer reflectors, the diffuser, you name it, the design is different. You might think it's subtle, but if you are an end owner and if you are an enthusiast, you will notice this difference right away immediately. Coming out beautifully like that. And again, I am driving in end line and mode and the amount of comfort that I get from this is just crazy 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 oh my god um, so the person in front of me is just another person who's testing out the Elantra and I just decided to follow the car just because but people have been criticizing and pointing out that why Hyundai didn't give us the LED turn signal on the rear. I mean, yeah, I can't disagree with you. Would have been really nice if they made that into the LED, but that is going to cost a lot. The different taillights, that needs a lot of um, upgrades and change. And also the lights are expensive. So probably this is uh, where we settle. I, and honestly speaking, I'm just really grateful and thankful that Hyundai is not discontinuing the Elantra and other internal combustion engine ends. And the rumor has it that this unfortunately might be the very, very last internal combustion engine and model that we might see, at least here in Korea. Globally, as we know, there are like i10 and i20 and i30 n for North American, excuse me, uh, German and European markets, Veloster and Kona, and there is actually a lot of ends out there. And uh, it's really a big shame that not everybody has the chance to experience and feel and test out, taste what this end has got to offer. Go get it as soon as possible because it's now or never kind of a deal here today, you know? So there are just a bunch of Elantra and the pre-facelift uh, models as we all know. And there is this whole event going on here today in Korea. I love that Kona and wheel that they have slept on right there. And also we saw that this model has the end performance wheel that was uh, previously implemented on Kona N. And that is what this PE model has, but don't be fooled. The standard wheels are the ones that we have seen on the showcase. So the blacked out wheels that we see here is for extra 700 to 750 US dollars. And that is trading in your original wheel that you would have gotten otherwise here in Korea, unfortunately. This and performance models and wheels and parts, I know a lot 
lot of you guys want it out there, but it's currently limited to Korean domestic market at the moment. Not sure why that is, but maybe Hyundai is just uh, testing out a few things before they uh, go big on M Performance parts. That is actually what I am currently doing. I can source these M parts here in Korea without a hassle. I can just, it's only a few clicks away for me. I know how frustrating it is not being able to get the parts you want because I've been there done that with my 370Z um, there are just so many parts in the US and North America whereas there is zero here in Korea so I have to actually buy everything from North America thanks to the vendors and exports I can actually get that part in Korea no problem but there is zero to none when it comes to the end performance parts so that's actually why I started getting quotes and trying to help out fellow enthusiasts getting the parts they want and well of course right here let's floor it with the NGS so the NPS NPS is not all that powerful either and that could be because it is not put on a it could be under different settings so I actually want to reset everything to the factory. So let's get back to the end parts that I was referring to. I am just an individual trying to ship out these parts. So I have, have zero to none background knowledge when it comes to the, the shipping. So the EMS was the best I could find and it just costs ridiculous amount when it comes to the large size um, parcels and shipments like spoilers and wheels um the quote that i got was like a 1000 us dollars on those set of wheels the four of them to the us so i am looking into my options and i am trying my best everything in my power to give you the best quote possible again enough of that i will try to uh, talk about this more on a regular basis when i get the chance but Let's go back and talk about this Elantra N and PE model. And it was just so beautiful on these turns. So let's actually take it and test it out one more time. So everything I have put it into the end mode. So what you hear, what you feel, the suspension setup and all, it's end mode. So you see it is definitely much more smoother than the previous N and well heavy brakes the ABS just came in I just uh, I was right there with the ABS and you see it just can stop the car no problem the light just came up saying that the crib is off meaning even if I have the auto hold off it's actually going to fall back and it's not going to do anything. You see, it's not moving in front, it's not moving forward at all. Definitely turn that off if you wanted to, but that is what I am seeing on the end mode. Curious what it will do on the regular? Yep. So on a regular, you see it now starts creeping. So <laughs> that sounds weird. But when you actually put the car into a regular drive mode, the car will start rolling forward when you actually take your foot off the foot brake. When you put the car into the end mode and it's actually going to have the creep mode off. And just like that, again, it came up, probably it's got to do with uh, TCU trying to save and be protective of the transmission and all. So that's probably what is going on with this algorithm here. So these um, detailed things that I, own, I can only find uh, with my test drives so you might think that there nothing much has been changed but there is a huge plus every time I drive a product enhancement or brand new vehicle just like this so listen to the bank of course this car being brand new and well you see it's probably got to do with the car being brand new as well. Uh, currently, I see 666 kilometers on the odometer. That could be a reason why it's not all that loud compared to the N Elantra Ns that I have been used to test driving. 
but still it's certainly uh, much more less louder than before and I will give you more I will give you a up close uh, detailed sounds of the exhaust when I get out again uh, let's test drives on the turns and corners the car will find a sweet spot no problem right away I kind of feel that the tire is a little bouncy so I, I want to check out the tire pressure here so going through yeah <laughs> no doubt it's 45 on the front left 51 on the front right and 48 50 on the rear that is a one unique Veloster N on the front so I actually want to follow that car and good front collision warning about time you engage right there right i was actually zooming onto the front of my car super close so the only thing there was just one thing that i really really wanted on my Veloster and dct and that was this smart cruise control and elantra and finally gets it i can't believe it actually is happening just unbelievable the creep off keep on turning on on the end mode so it actually is trying to probably protect and that is one way of the epb holding on to the car and that way you don't want to have the car creeping forward kind of uh, you know the damaging the transmission and also the burden on the engine and whatnot but there has not been an upgrade in terms of the uh, motor and the suspension i post things on my community asking questions see if there's any uh, of the questions you might have when it comes to the test drives so i've gotten some of these questions that i'll answer right now so first can you feel the difference from the engine mounts so there has been a upgraded engine mount on this Elantra NPE as we know. This was precisely mentioned at the preview. Honestly, I'm not like a race car driver, right? So I, it's really tough for me to differentiate that from <laughs> the, this test drive. So these things that you feel immediately right after hopping in this car, but after a few, few minutes of driving you don't feel it anymore so it's on that boundary I want to say so kind of I don't really feel all that much of a difference when it comes to the engine mounts but suspension boy you have probably been seeing it on this monitors and videos already but the suspensions are different softer smoother the way it goes over the speed bump the rear strokes are longer by having different compression rates on the springs i would have to actually double check and give you a precise name for that in terms of what hyundai has upgraded with the rear but i know the rear has been changed made official by hyundai is there no more wheel hop thanks to the change to rear suspension i it's probably yes and no you could probably see that wheel hop on the track but maybe not as severely as it was on the previous elantra and that is for sure because it's something that honda has specified and mentioned but unfortunately on this test drives on the some um, spirited drives and canyon roads there is just no way of me being able to test drive that because i would certainly have to go way over 100 kilometers plus in order to at least feel that the suspension has been changed from the original model and it is unofficially official that it will be a direct swap direct plug and play from your previous uh, original elantra n so hopefully that's a good news i really do like the ecs the ends get did get on my Veloster and also Elantra and I think it does a very good job of providing that comfort drive on comfort mode and three different drive modes right so eco mode as well as normal and sport I like how the smart cruise control is still there regardless of different drive modes I put in you could easily switch around in between your drive modes the way it recognizes the lanes and the steering wheel input I am getting it is just on par with the latest HDA2 I will try to find that out by putting the car on the highway later on so the steering wheel feedback that I am getting the torque on the steering wheel is not as crazy as it used to be so just like on the normal mode it's quite 
light and all this is comparing it to the previous N so it's all based on N I am talking about steel is heavier than a regular Elantra and regular sedans out there but again don't forget that this is Elantra N and going over the speed bump wow 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 trust me I really really do love the comfy suspension that this car has gotten it's absolutely comfortable. Elantra NPE has those three aspects of ends for sure. Number one, everyday sports car. Number two, corner rascal. And three, racetrack capability, right? Okay, so this definitely does feel like the HDA2. HDA1 wouldn't really behave like this on the tight turns that we just saw. This is a beautiful ocean side, a coastline we have here in Korea with Gangwon-do where all this end event is happening. And we just had the typhoon pass by. Wow, look at, wow, Ooh, look at those waves breaking. Absolutely gorgeous. All that three hours and 30 minute drive one way was all worth it just this beautiful drives the course with this Elantra oh my god look at that wave Jesus okay so maybe some tight turns here yeah let's see Yes, uh, there is Kona N with the combiner type, but uh, the Loster, uh, excuse me, Elantra NPE uh, still didn't get the um, HUD. A combiner type would have been also nice if they could have thrown it there, but nah, I don't really see any space where it could be made uh, possible and applicable. And honestly, you have all the info on this tachometer with the um, 10.25 dual monitors left and right. It's not the largest one from the Hyundai Motor Group family as we know, whereas there's 12.3-inch uh, monitors currently out in the market. Uh, bigger the better for the screens, I am not going to lie. Still, it is a beautiful piece of um, tachometer and display that they have right here. Just like Elantra N has been, you can see the engine, steering wheel, and suspension setup on the menu right here with the red bars and stacks. So I have full red stacks currently, so meaning it's going to have a completely all out end mode here. And I wanna show you this. Of course the end mode and the throttle, oil temp, engine temp, all this we've seen before. The track, just tap on the circuit, you're going to see all the tracks in your area, all the tracks we have here in Korea. And um, I want to go into the custom setting. This is it, the custom setting. That guy, this guy is going out. Again, this is the reset that I have done. So this is the standard setting. I will go into the custom one. So put the engine to engine sport, of course. This is the secret recipe that I told you about. So I put engine sport, steering wheel normal, and less burden on my uh, steering wheel input. Suspension, normal, and transmission is sport plus. ELSD, probably you want it on the sport mode. ECS, the car aiding me, and the exhaust note right here. So this is the final setup. The key is that you want to have the engine on the sport mode, sport plus, and the exhaust on the sport plus while having the transmission set at normal. And uh, let's go test out, see if that is going to make a difference. Everybody seems to be getting out, so. Again, you can see that there is the surround view cam, 360 surround view cam here in this Elantra NPE. And some of you guys might be thinking, what am I even talking about? Is that a thing? But it is a big thing when it comes to Elantra ends. 
this is the setup that I had on my N Veloster N before. Not sure if it's going to give me that, but. Okay, so I was on the N mode. <laughs> what am I even talking about? I was still in N mode, right? All right, custom one. Custom one, okay, yeah. So this is the, well, that, this is what I'm talking about. The steering wheel is just so much lighter than the before. And the steering wheel, I only see one stack as well as the suspension set of one stack as well. Let's see what difference it makes. Put it on the manual, lower it down one. Yup. Yup. As we saw that thing overheated, so cameras are overheating. I have been shooting for just too long. I've been going on and on because I got so much to talk about when it comes to the Elantra N, no doubt, right? So yeah, just listen to this sound. Much louder so my recipe you see I will actually um, give you a timestamp so you can actually compare the sound difference back to back
I am going to give you the different sounds of an exhaust in different modes. And this is the side that you actually want to have your mic pointing at because this is where the variable flap is for the N exhausts. So it will go in the order of eco, normal, sport, N mode, and my custom mode, which I claim to be the loudest mode of it all. <laughs> if you're curious about the setup on my custom mode, um, I have the timestamp in the video, so feel free to go check it out. got some good exhaust notes on this Elantra NPE so feel free to check it out it's all in the timestamps it's a little quieter than the one before the test driver is still relatively new and there's a lot of uh, work to be done with the catalytic converters and all the more aged it is um, the louder it tends to get <laughs> Do not miss the, all of that out. I have been test driving this car for about two hours straight. Now I want to tell you everything about this um, Elantra NPE, what this car has got to offer. And I know you guys want to hear and see every moment of how this Elantra NPE behaves during the runs and drives. So I am deliberately putting this car into end mode once again. Overall, what I can definitely want to point out is the different suspension setup that this Elantra N has. It has to be somewhat sportier because now the Veloster N has been discontinued. However, it needs to live up to the title of Elantra N and being a N after all. It certainly is a car that gives you everything that there is for a sedan. It's got the practicality, of course, massive trunk. Uh, there is the braces and the second row seats. You can't really have the second row completely fully flat and load uh, lots of them. Unfortunately not, but still it gets the work done. You can actually take it out and undo the bolts and uh, use it if you wanted to, although not recommended. It is going to make the car behave completely different, so beware. However, it's got the spades. It is still Elantra after all, and I am actually taking a detour to test out the smart cruise control, how it is on the freeway and all of that. Because that is the only thing that I really wanted on my Veloster N DCT. A smart cruise control and now this PE gets it. This is like the perfect track toy, a toy car, a fun car to drive for you now. There will be a point where everybody would know that N stands for racetrack capability. And I keep on saying it because I still do know people are new to N brands, even in Korea. The survey that Hyundai has done here at the beach, uh, it was open to the general public and then they asked, how many of you actually knew 
the end brand and nearly 50% didn't even know that they existed. So probably they've been thinking that this is just one heck of loud Elantra, period. Loud Veloster. And of course, we gearheads, enthusiasts, we all know what an N is, we all know what Ns are capable of, but that is just the general public. Let me use the smart cruise control. Now is just the perfect time. Again, you can use the smart cruise control system anywhere in any drive modes. You can switch around the drive modes. The smart cruise control system will stay on. So, just like that and it even works on the end mode there is a long way to go but everybody who's been driving who has driven an end before and just number of the enthusiasts growing around the globe we can tell i can tell that hyundai n has come a very very long way props to hyundai kudos to hyundai keep it going i know electrification is just around the corner not even around the corner it, it is here already right we already saw what ionic 5n still I really have high hopes for that. I just personally am very curious about that car. It certainly was the first EV that I really wanted for myself, but I don't think I would be able to afford it because of the price tag and all, but the performance vehicle that's got the power, but that still is an EV, it's got the storage, all that Ionic 5, I actually shot another footage to make a direct comparison. So test drive on Ionic 5 is just coming up in a few weeks. So make sure you come back for that. This might very well be the last internal combustion engine N. I hate to break it to you, I hate to tell you this, but that could very well be a reality that we are facing, that manufacturers are facing. So just cherish this moment, no love and hate relationship between internal combustion engines and EVs. They are just two very different motored cars, right? But let's embrace and cherish this moment, uh, just living this era, this time around it just is perfect time to be around a car enthusiast all right so that's it for today i you know i've been saying this and that all throughout because that's what n makes you that is what an enthusiast's car is this n And hit me up on WhatsApp if you're curious about the N performance parts and other N Hyundai Kia Genesis merchandise. I'll try to source you the best quote possible. And I am trying to come up with my Instagram page. This is not a business that I'm trying to run. Maybe I'm just trying to get some filler. Uh, this is not professionally built already. I am just hand giving quotes one by one. So please um, spare me some time. Be patient. Let's see where this takes us. And I don't, who knows, I can turn this into a complete venture one day, right? Again, thanks for your support and love. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Definitely come back for that Ionic 5N video, right? And there's BMW 1M in the front. got the Nürburgring written on it too. He doesn't want to go, but still we got some great footage. I don't know what that means. Okay, he wants to go. All right, let's go, let's go. Never expected this, never saw this coming, but we might be able to get some good runs together with the 1M. Mmm, I can smell the exhaust! <laughs> I wonder what setup he is running, but... Alright, before I choke to death... You're on video! <laughs> you are certainly going on my cam. <laughs> People would love this. Huh, maybe I should just make a video on 1M versus Elantra N, huh? Just feel that ELSD engaging. No understeer whatsoever. You see, I 
came greeting, <laughs> smiling, grinning, and NGS, N grin shift. And also this a blind spot view monitor comes in handy. And now is the time to test out the smart cruise control. Just look at this, oh my God. <gasps> look at this, can't believe that I have this on N, Elantra N. Just because of this tech alone, I kind of thought about getting a Kona N, you know, because of the smart cruise control, adaptive smart cruise control. Well, let me actually just restart it right here on the freeway. I know it's cheating a little bit because we are on a freeway and I've reset it on the freeway, but let me put it on the eco mode and just let's run it for Actually, I my next exit is in 20 kilometers. Uh, let's clock and see what MPG this Elantra MPE gives us. As for the steering wheel, of course, it's still torque basis. You still have to give it a little push whenever he asks you to get the hands on the steering wheel. The number just keeps on going up. All right, there it is. I just clocked 10 kilometers and it's giving me 17.4 kilometers per liter and there are there has been good ups and downs and probably you can probably see up ahead it's an uphill right now so they um but still just giving me that ridiculous mpg altogether. i'll set this odometer running until uh, my destination and when i get off the freeway of course it's going to get dropped but you could easily see way above that 10 kilometer per liter figure using the smart adaptive smart cruise control honestly when i put my velocer n into eco mode that was when i was actually running out of gas and i really needed the extra kilometer or two that's when i put my car in eco but it, it is it is there and it, it is an elantra after all just affordable sedan affordable family sedan that will take you places all right so there it is i am taking off the freeway have been driving for 22 kilometers approximately and the average is 18.5 kilometers per liter for 13 minutes again i have reset this during on the freeway so i cheated a little here but it is the ridiculous amount of mpg you get with the adaptive smart cruise control this 2024 Hyundai Elantra and gets just can't believe my eyes oh my god so imagine the gas you'll be saving with that tech alone over the course of the years of time of well <laughs> it's a turn and mode <laughs> all right elsd just look at it digging into the corners just like that and it's a freeway exit so there are just nobody you know and the mpg just dropped down to 17.1 <laughs> just from that uh, you know <laughs> I didn't really want to mention it here, but I actually have been test driving this car for <laughs> three hours. Swear to God, I did not know. I thought maybe I was driving it for like an hour and 30. This Elantra N is actually allocated to me for the test drive, so don't get me wrong. But never thought that I would actually be test driving this car for this long. And you guys all exactly know what I mean. If you have driven an M before, you can never get enough. All right, so the time is really up with this Elantra and unfortunately, I will see you in the next video. Ioni 5N for sure, but I don't think I will have the test drives ready for the Elantra N. But fingers crossed, if I do, of course, I'll take this car to places. I'll take this car on a canyon run and spirited driving and roads over there. So over there, I'll be able to tell you more about this Elantra MPE. It's certainly definitely about the turns and corners when it comes to the N, which I kind of missed out a little. I couldn't really get all of it, but uh, just look, the suspension, period. <laughs> suspension and this adaptive smart cruise control. That's what this Elantra MPE is all about. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Look at this, Spark speed bump. Oh, I can actually test.
the rear suspension hop this way, right? Because I could certainly feel it before, but I didn't. When you go over the speed bump fast, you could actually feel suspension hop on the rear, but I don't, I just didn't feel that with the, uh, this. Ooh, I just actually found that out that way. Perfect.